On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings. Five. Go- I've been really excited golden about it. Golden rings. Four. Co- uh, I'm going to call foul on this one. No, this is not a bird episode. Oh, but is it? Some historians believe that this line was originally about the golden pheasant, a bird with golden brown feathers making rings around its body and neck. That would make the first seven days about birds. So what happened? Why... Why is this not about birds? Well, that children's book that we referenced in our first episode from about 1780 uh, included an illustration of five rings, not pheasants. So here we are. We're just going to go with rings. It is nice to take a bird break. I would love to, actually. Now, at this point, we could talk about engagement rings or wedding bands. But then I came across an article about the gold panic of September 1869, which was the work of a group that called themselves the Gold Ring. You didn't think you were going to get a break from all this? We're going back to regular on Genius in the middle. <laughs> all right, we're going to do it. Let's do it. That's right. So to finance the Civil War and Reconstruction, the U.S. government had taken on substantial debt. While this was going on, the U.S.'s paper money, known then as greenbacks, was not redeemable for gold, which had been effectively taken out of circulation as regular currency. This meant that the price of gold skyrocketed. But President Ulysses Grant might have the best name of any president. It's very presidential. President Ulysses Grant and his administration viewed it as a short-term problem, signing the Public Credit Act of 1869, which stipulated the government would repay U.S. bonds in gold quote, gold or its equivalent, and would redeem the greenbacks from the economy as soon as possible. What does its equivalent mean? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe something else becomes valuable. I don't know. Like, maybe you just get like a ton of tin, right? <laughs> like, just like so much tin. <laughs> this made the price of gold swing back down. And this is when things get weird. Railroad tycoon and typical evil rich guy, Jay Gould, wanted to corner the gold market as the low prices had greatly impacted his wealth. He reached out to a newspaper editor named Abel Corbin. Corbin happened to be the president's brother-in-law, and he was roped in to help him do it. After finding a couple more conspirators, the men put their plan into action. They used Corbyn's relationship to get close to Grant in social situations where they would argue against government sale of gold, which Corbyn, with Corbyn stepping in to support their arguments. After several meetings and some bribes offered to those working for the president, word was getting out that Grant supported raising the value of gold even if it wasn't true. Now we have to talk about U.S. Treasury Secretary George S. Batwell, who began selling gold from the Treasury's reserve. Uh, That was about $100 million in gold bars. This allowed the government to buy back U.S. bonds and further reduce national debt. These sales were announced in advance, and even though Batwell saw nothing wrong with his plan, the sales stopped after several months at the president's request. This is when our band of bad guys made their move, buying about $1.5 million in gold in the name of Corbin and Daniel Butterfield, who had been appointed Assistant Treasury Secretary, a position, a position he was given after Corbin and Gord lobbied successfully for it. Mm, the inside man. The conspirators would make $15,000 for every dollar that the value of gold went up and initially made quite a bit of money. But when the price fell again, the plan fell apart, leaving Gould and his financial partner, a man named James Fisk, in the lurch. Fisk then suggested a plan that he apply pressure to a group of gold investors to settle their debts at a rate much higher than gold was getting on the open market. After being warned by associates that this was probably crazy illegal, the pair decided they they would bull the price of gold To an even higher price, they would do this by buying large amounts of gold at the current high price and forcing it to be sold even higher. At this point in September, the regular selling of gold from the Treasury had been stopped, and the men wrote the president a letter urging him to stay the course. This tipped off the president, finally, who in turn urged his (laughs) brother-in-law to abandon his partnership with gold. He wasn't successful in leaving, even as the partners hoarded gold and drove the price up. I've just now realized how close gold and gold are. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's hard to say. But by September 22nd, 
they held more than $50 million in gold, more than three times the public supply available in New York. I think they may have overextended themselves a bit. (laughs) The next day, after the baddies had sent some $60,000 in gifts to the president as a very poorly disguised bribe (laughs) to keep the government out of gold selling... Grant had the Treasury sell $4 million worth of gold, dropping the price and ending the pair's stranglehold on the market. In fact, the price fell so far that it impacted the national economy for months after a run was made on the New York Gold Exchange. Stock prices dropped by 20% from September 24th to October 1st, with many brokerages and individual investors taking substantial losses. Prices of crops took a huge hit as well, prompting a congressional investigation into what took place. Congress would eventually clear the president of any wrongdoing, but did point the finger at Gold, Corbyn, and others. Gould. Gould, not Gold. Fisk and Gould escaped conviction, remaining wealthy and powerful until their deaths. In fact, Gould was worth an estimated $70 million when he died in 1892. He outlived Fisk by 20 years. Fisk ended up being murdered as part of a love triangle gone wrong. Oh, man, I hate it when that happens. It, it's a sad state. Uh-huh. Even though he wasn't guilty of anything or found guilty of anything, President Grant really never fully escaped the situation, with many wary of his brother-in-law's actions in the scheme. What we can all take away from this very holiday-themed episode is you should not trust the in-laws that are sitting around your table. I have no comment on that, but if you want to read a lot more about this conspiracy, check out the links at relay.fm slash ungenius slash 171. And until we get our goose eggs on, Mike, say goodbye. Yeah, you've got it. We're back to birds, baby. See you tomorrow.